Hello, my darlings. Welcome to Cryptids Canada. I hope everybody's having a great day. So, once again, I've got the construction crew next door. So, uh, I've tried to wait them out, but it looks like they're going to be here for a few days. So, you guys, please ignore the banging and the banging with these great big ginormous boy toys. Anyways, before I get started, you guys, please do me a favor. Hit the like button. Hit the bell if you want notifications of when I upload videos. And subscribe. And also, if you have an encounter or a story that you would like me to read, uh, by all means, send it. You know I greatly appreciate it. And also, about this story. I received it about a week and a half ago. I loved it right from the get-go. As you guys know, I read everything. Well, I reached out to the fella to clarify a few things because he has sent me two stories that are kind of intermingled. So I just wanted to verify some things, but it's not a big deal. I didn't hear back from him. A lot of people don't even check their email, so it's quite all right. So let's just get on with the story. I know you're going to love this one. Hello, Cryptids Canada. I think you will find my first experience odd because I don't remember any of it. Back in 1982, my then girlfriend, Debbie, and I were riding my Kawasaki 750 Turbo on Interstate 82 from Ellensburg, Washington. We had driven through Yakima, if my memory serves me correctly, and Debbie motioned she had to pee. We turned onto a side road. Even though it was a back road, I had a car pass me and another car coming towards me. So I drove down about five miles looking for a more private spot for Debbie when she motioned that anywhere was fine. So I just pulled over. There were cornfields on both sides and Debbie just stepped into the cornfield to do her business. When she was finished, we got back on the bike and started driving faster than I should have, I will admit. I was trying to make up a little bit of time from the bathroom break, I assume. Most of this is completely foggy to me, so the story comes from Debbie's memory. Also, Debbie didn't tell me all this for years for fear that I would call her a lunatic. It was only after I told Debbie that... I saw a Bigfoot while at my buddy's house that Debbie admitted to me she saw one too and decided to tell me the story of that fateful night riding from Ellensburg on my new bike. So apparently we were driving about 60 miles per hour when all of a sudden a deer came running out of the cornfield from the north side of the road. Unfortunately we hit it and we both flew off the bike. Debbie landed in the cornfield about six feet from the collision and I landed on the road about 15 feet up the road from the collision, approximately 10 feet from Debbie. I never saw the reports and Debbie said she's kind of guessing at the distance. As I mentioned, Debbie didn't tell me this for a long time until after I went to a party at my buddy's house for a weekend and happened to have an experience there. So when I came home and mentioned it to Debbie, she felt safe enough to tell me the story of the night we had our accident. She said, after our accident, she started to rouse herself. She knew what happened right away, and she was stunned and surprised to be in the cornfield. She could see the road from where she landed, and she saw me laying on the road. She was about to yell my name when she saw an ape-like being come from across the road on all fours hesitantly. After a couple of steps, it stopped and stood up, still nervous to get close to me. Leaning forward, it started sniffing. Then it took a couple more steps and started sniffing my face. It turned its whole body and looked down the road and then looked the other way. Debbie said my bike was on the side of the road. She was terrified this Bigfoot was going to hurt me, 
and yes, she knew what it was right away. She is half Native American, and her family lived on the Yakima Indian Reservation. She just didn't know where I stood on the matter. She watched as this six to seven foot tall cross between a human and ape with long, stringy, and filthy, dirty hair that was light and dark brown in color and very stinky. She watched as it grabbed my ankle and slowly pulled me off the road. Debbie said I was almost directly across from her. She watched as it sat on its haunches and rocked back and forth on its feet. Then it reached down and sniffed my feet and rocked back and forth for a minute or two. Then it leaned forward again and smelled from my neck down to my belly button. It sat back again and it did this over and over until I had been sniffed from top to bottom. Then it sat there staring at me, and it reached out and felt my pants and my shirt. It was so enthralled and so interested in what I was. It poked at my helmet, and yes, we wore helmets on long drives, and sometimes not if it was a quick trip to the store and back. But I thank God I had a helmet on that night, because it saved my life. My elbows and knees were quite scraped up and bleeding, but not as bad as you would think. Now, here's the part that really got me thinking. Debbie said it held my wrists for quite a while, both of them, first the left and then the right. Finally, Debbie said you could see car lights coming, and the Bigfoot stood up and walked back into the cornfield. Debbie stood up and flagged down the car. When they stopped, Deb started telling them what had happened, but thought better of talking about the Bigfoot. She told them that she was so scared to be by herself, so the husband stayed with her and me, and the wife drove to call an ambulance. I woke up on the scene, but I didn't recall anything. At the hospital, they did all kinds of tests, and the doctor said that the tests showed There was no internal bleeding or damage, but just that I had had previous broken bones. I asked, what? What broken bones? And he said that it showed I had healed fractures on both of my wrists. And I just said, huh, I don't remember ever breaking my wrists. I guess I just forgot about it. But when Deb finally told me about the accident and how the Sasquatch dwelled on my wrists, I recalled what the doctor said. I even verified with both of my parents that I had never broken my wrists. I wonder if, with all the stories you hear about Bigfoot having healing powers, if they healed my wrists that day, or maybe even more that we just don't know about. Maybe I had more damage inside, And it cured that too. I guess I'll never know. But look, I've heard so many stories about Bigfoot killing dogs and humans and being cannibals and Bigfoot saving humans and kids. There's channels that tell only scary stories and there's channels that tell only positive stories. But I chose your channel when I decided to tell my experience because you read them all. You willingly admit that you are just not sure. There's so much contradicting evidence that you just don't want to choose a side. And Leslie, I respect that in you. I feel the exact same way. But honestly, I gotta say, I feel pretty damn special if a Bigfoot healed me. Now, this is my second experience. This occurred at my buddy Freddie's place near Goose Prairie, Washington. I was there for a weekend. When I arrived, Freddie's brother Ray, who I've known a long time, seemed really mad and said, Freddie, you need to tell Bob before he decides to stay. And then he got in his truck and he left. There was going to be a big weekend camp out and party 
that he does every year, so I was surprised to see Ray take off. Freddy shook his head and said, Well, we've been having stuff happening around the house for a few weeks. Stuff's gone missing. I asked what, and he said, Well, for one, chickens and dozens of eggs for weeks. Two bags of dog food, and now the pig that I bought for the pig roast on the weekend. We killed it, and it's been hanging in a makeshift cold room in the shed. And after a horrible night last night, me and Ray just saw the pig is gone. And we have 30 people coming for the weekend, and we have nothing for the barbecue. Ray's mad because he wants me to cancel. I asked what he thought was going on, and he said he had no idea. But last night, we were getting stuff organized, building the big pole tent, because it's supposed to rain Saturday. And my wife doesn't want everybody in and out of the house. We had the music on, and we had a few beers. We noticed that we were getting rocks thrown at us from the woods. We started throwing them back, because we figured it was kids who were screwing around with us. Then, one of Ray's kids comes out and says he saw a really tall man running from tree to tree inside the wood line when he was in the bathroom looking out the window. Stuff like that continued on and we tried to ignore it, so we moved inside to get ready for bed and then the rocks start hitting the roof and something was making all kinds of squealing sounds. Finally, I had enough and me and Ray went outside and shot off a few rounds into the air. It got dead quiet. Not even a peep from the frogs or the crickets. We started hearing loud clicking sounds and pops that you make with your mouth, but these things were 20 times louder. We shot off a couple more rounds and went inside. We woke up this morning to the rental tent ripped to shreds and the poles twisted and the pig was gone. Ray's furious because he put a $500 deposit down on the tent, and I don't even know if he's coming back, Freddie said. So I said, okay, look, we'll figure it out. So we went and bought a bunch of tarps and hung them up as best as we could, and I went to a farmer down the road and bought another smaller pig. I paid extra so he would get it ready for the spit Saturday morning. All in all, everything looked like it was going to work out. People started arriving and putting up their tents. The DJ arrived and then the rocks started getting thrown and the squeals and the screams could be heard. But most of the people were just ignoring it or they didn't realize. Then finally, on the Sunday afternoon, we were waiting for the stragglers to head out before taking everything down. And I went upstairs to use the bathroom, and while I was going, I happened to look out the window. And that's when I saw the same creature that Ray's son saw. An enormous, hairy creature hiding from behind the trees. It seemed to be overly curious and would move quickly from tree to tree. I called Ray and Freddy to come to the bathroom, and they actually caught sight of it too. I too had to leave to get home because I had work on Monday. And when I got home, I told Debbie, who didn't come because she had to work all weekend. And that's when she filled me in on the Bigfoot and the accident. I called Freddy and he said after the commotion died down on Sunday, they never saw it again. And as far as I know, all these years later, they still haven't seen it. So that's it for my story. Please keep my info private, but I'm fine if you just want to call me Bob. I hope it wasn't too confusing. I wasn't going to tell you about Freddy's Bigfoot barbecue, but once I got started, I figured I'd better tell it all. Anyways, I love you. I love your show. All the best, Bob. Wow, Bob, your story was amazing, and I'm blessed that you sent it to me. And you guys see why I love my job so much. And honestly, if I had more stories sent to me, I would work more. I would tell stories every day if I had them. But you guys got to send them. Anyways, you guys know I love you. Have a great day and we'll see you back here eh, in a day or two. Bye for now.